Hey guys, how you doing? Joe McCall with Gavin I'm Tim's, my good buddy. Good. Good morning, Joe. How are you? I'm doing well. Not as well as you. No, I'm saying I'm doing better than you. I guess what I would say. Yeah. Gavin's a little under the weather. Everybody say a word of prayer for Gavin that he gets better. Thank you. <laughs> now, where where are you these days? You've been traveling. Yeah, I was in Phoenix. Uh, I flew out of Phoenix yesterday. I'm in New Orleans right now. I'm back at the rig at the RV, and I'm in New Orleans. What are you doing in New Orleans? Um, we have friends. We have uh, we're going camping for the weekend uh, for a friend of ours' uh, birthday. So there's probably about five or six RVs getting together. Wow, nice. Um, yeah. So, so Crystal, uh, your wife's with you. Yeah, she flew in from Savannah. I flew in from Arizona. We met back at the RV uh, yesterday. Uh, we'll be camping through Sunday and then heading back to Savannah. Nice. Did you bring yeah. your dogs? No, not on this trip. Oh, nice. They're home. Yeah, dog free. <laughs> Which is a big dog deal. Free. It's hard to bring two big dogs. Oh, yeah. You have two, yeah. right? What kind of two dogs, dogs do you have for people who don't know? Golden Doodle and a Labradoodle. Nice. So both doodles. Yeah, great yeah. dogs. We have two as well. Um, they're both Golden Doodles. One's white and one's red. Um, I, you know, I love doodles, um, but I, I do, they're not as playful and fun as a Labrador or a straight up golden retriever is, you know, like a lab and a golden retriever. They're like, play, 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 you know, and they love to fetch and they love to swim. Um, our, our doodles are a little kind of stuck up a little bit. They're kind of, you know, what do you call it? I, I don't want to be insensitive here, but they're kind of like, yeah, you know, that's not our style. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they're too big time for that. Yeah, they're too important. <laughs> but uh, cool, guys. Hey, we wanted to talk about something we have cool coming up real soon here. And as we're recording this right now, it's coming up next week. We are doing something that we've never done before. And I'm so excited about it, Gavin. Um, we're going to be teaching people how to make offers. Yeah. I mean, the, it's really kind of the basic, fundamental, most important part of this business, making offers, right? So if people aren't making offers, they're not making money. And it's pretty quick. It, it's, it's one of the easiest exercises that we have as coaches when we're helping a student to figure out what's going on, why they're not doing deals or why they're struggling. And we ask them a simple question. How many offers have you made in the last week? Right. Yep. And for some reason, I'm being sarcastic here, but like the people that struggle the most make the least offers. And the students and clients and investors that do the best make the most offers. Yep. Go figure. I don't know. Why is that? Well, if you want to make money, you got to do deals. And if you want to do deals, guess what? You need to make offers. And sometimes it's like intimidating. We get it. It's overwhelming. You're afraid of like, well, what if I make a stupid offer? What if I look stupid making this offer? What if the seller laughs at me and gets mad at me and calls me a vulture and I get, you know, and it, it you know, what am I going to look like an idiot? The other fear on the other side is like, well, what if the seller says yes, then what am I going to do? Right? So it's really important, especially for new investors to learn how to make offers and how to make intelligent offers um, and, and, and offers that meet the seller's needs. Right. Because sometimes, right, Gavin, like a seller may not want or need an all cash offer or a lease option offer. And it would be stupid to make them one of those offers. Right. Yeah, absolutely. It can definitely uh, hinder um, if you make, you know, too many offers when it doesn't actually fit what they need. You're exactly right. You can actually lose that rapport that you've built. Um, so <clears throat> the goal is, is to solve the problem. Find out what the problem is of the seller. Once you have the problem, you then need to bring the solution to the table by making the right offer, pairing the offers up. And obviously, if it's a cold lead, Joe, where they don't really care, whatever, just make me an offer, then obviously you can do your three or four offer offers together uh, because it's just a cold lead. But if someone, for instance, let's say, you know, wants to sell quickly, they're over it, they don't want to deal with the property anymore, things like that, you making an assignment lease option offer is not going to solve that problem. Right. And what you've done now is you've actually created more work for yourself because you have an assignment lease option on the page, which is the biggest amount of money on the paper. So guess what they want? They want the assignment lease option price at the cash terms and then the deal breaks down. So if that wasn't going to solve the problem, then you need to be making a 
an owner finance, a cash or a sandwich lease option where you can show them that you can take responsibility of the property and they don't have to deal with it anymore. Yeah. And it's like if a seller is open to a lease option and there's a little bit of equity and there's cash flow in there, you don't want to make them a lease option assignment offer. Yeah. Right. And they've already said they don't want to be a landlord. They don't want any involvement in it. So it's important you understand like when you make the right kind of offers. It's, so it's important to not complicate it, to keep it super simple. In fact, we coach a lot of students who maybe come to us wanting to learn lease options. Really, they just want to do deals. And we might even tell them, listen, uh, maybe shelf lease options for a little bit and learn how to find good cash deals, right? Because there is, in some ways, th those are easier to explain. So there's a place for a one offer situation, cash offer. There's also a place with a cold lead where they're like, nah, I don't want to sell right now or whatever. Maybe you send them three options or multiple options, right? So we're going to start a challenge. And, and one of the things that we like to say here is, um, let me get my banner up here so you can see what we're talking about. You're just one offer away from maybe changing your life forever. You know what I'm saying? Like, what if you're doing all this marketing and you're getting all these leads, but you're not talking to the sellers, you're not making offers, or you're waiting three, four days before you send the offer. I mean, how many times have we done that? I've done that because I'm, you know, just nervous. I'm overanalyzing and spending too much time like researching the property before I even call the seller. And then there's some motivation, there's some interest. So, like, it's really important. We're going to dive deep into this challenge. Um, called the One Offer Challenge. And if you're interested in this, you can go right now to theofferchallenge.com because it's going to be free and we start next week. We're doing it um, in the evening next week. I think Wednesday, Thursday evening or something. Yep. Um, and it's completely free. And in this and, and in this video right now, we're going to be showing, we're going to be talking a little bit about the different kinds of offers that you can make. So this isn't just a pitch to the challenge, but you should, I mean, it's free. Come on, what are you waiting for? Go to theofferchallenge.com and sign up. But um, we are going to be teaching you how to make offers. When do you make a cash offer? When do you make a lease option offer? And there's different kinds of lease options. When do you make a subject to offer? Owner financing offer. There's a place for that kind of stuff. And it's really not that complicated. You know, I think a lot of people um, get confused, Gavin, or get overwhelmed because they feel like they have to know how to make all these different offers before they even make one offer. or and this, I, I see this a lot, Gavin, is like, they feel like they have to understand how to do all of steps one through 20 of the deal yep. before they actually start making offers to sellers, right? Now, why can, how, how and why is that a bad thing? And, and how does, why does that stop people in their tracks from ever even getting started? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's probably the most common thing that everyone wants to know from start to finish. And as Joe just said, we just probably name five or six different strategies. So then you have one to 20 and that's like a hundred things over five strategies that you need to know. It's just, it's just not possible. So you definitely, what we're doing, you know, in the coaching even is break it down to get you to a place where you're generating leads. Okay. Last challenge having them conversations and then making them offers. Um, and that is it. It does not matter until that, until that contract, Joe, is signed. It doesn't matter what's going to happen after the deal. It just doesn't. Because, and here's why, well, people are like, well, I need an attorney or I need this person or I need that person. It's much easier to negotiate and find people when you have something than when it's just theory. And if and when I get something. Right. Meaning that if I have a contract and I need a closing attorney, when you go into that and you're like, hey, hi, I have a contract. I'm ready to close this property. They're going to want to talk with you and get things moving immediately rather than you wasting their time saying, well, when I get a contract, you know, yeah. what do I do? And you ask a thousand questions because you're wasting their time. Then it goes south. So just be thinking about that. Our goal is to get that offer signed. Anything that beyond that offer, you can figure out in the next training you know, in the next video, whatever courses you've got or coaches you've got, you then go and just watch that hour or 30 minute video and then start applying the next thing ahead. And that is yeah. going to be the best way to do it. So we, we always are challenging people. Stop asking what if and start asking what next. And your first what next, maybe your second what next is to make an offer. Just make an offer. Don't overanalyze it. And you don't have to spend hours analyzing and figuring out an offer you can make you should be able to make an offer in just a couple minutes 
and one of the things that I'm going to, I'm super excited about in this free challenge, which is December 15th and 16th. We're doing it in the evening. It's just two nights, 8 PM Eastern, no strings attached. Honestly, it's completely free. Go to the offer challenge.com, but we're going to be talking about how to look at a deal within five minutes or less, come up with a really good cash offer for using resources that you can get for free on the internet. We're also going to show you how you can get, make a couple different lease option offers, a couple different owner financing offers, subject to offers, et cetera. It's really not that complicated. It's really easy. And so um, I'm excited about this. Uh, and let's talk a little bit right now, Gavin, about, um, let me see, we got a comment here. Oh, come on. Todd Toback's in the house. What's up, Todd? Todd, what's up? Hey. All right. Todd's a good friend. He's one of my original coaches and mentors. He got me started in the business back in 2007. Can you believe that, Todd? 2007. Uh, and so, in fact, I remember um, Todd challenging me on these things when we were first getting, when I was first getting started, you know, you, you've got to make offers and that's what a coach's job is. And any good coach is going to be challenging you and pushing you and, and asking you these kinds of hard questions. Okay. What's your goal? You want to make a grand a month? All right. How many offers have you made in the last week? And, and the reason why it's so important to make offers, I think one of the biggest reasons is it, it helps give you something to follow up with the seller on, right? Because the deals come from the follow-up. They're, they're going to say probably nine times out of 10, they're going to say no to your offer, right? It's going to be too low. They're going to, they, they feel like they can sell it a normal, a different way. They feel like they can get more for their money and maybe they can, and they should, if they can, and you need to have this attitude, if they can get more from someone else, they should go to someone else, right? Mm -hmm. But like most of the time, sellers are going to say no. And, the, and your deals are going to come from the follow-up. And you know, one of the things Todd taught me, is, did he make another comment? Here we go. Join the challenge. Come on. So much value here. <laughs> um, one of the things I also learned from Todd was uh, the, the concept of no lead left behind. No lead left behind. And so if you have a leaky bucket and all these leads are coming in, they're going to fall through and you're going to not have anything left to you know in the bucket. So you've got to make an offer to every seller you talk to, and you've got to follow up with every seller. Then when you follow up with them, it's like, hey, Jim, this is Joe here. You probably don't remember me. I'm following up about with that offer I sent you a couple months ago or a month ago, right? Yep. And guess what? Why, why don't you send an offer every single month to all of your leads that you sent? to? Just send the same offer again, right? Yep. This and is something... I was Go just going to say, Joe, especially on the creative stuff, right? Yeah. You're not going to get the contract signed by making the first offer because all you're doing is you're, you're seeding things, right? You put in the seeds and you let it grow. You're letting the relationship grow through the follow-up to then get these deals. Sometimes on a creative deal, people don't even have not even thought or know anything about this strategy. And I think the pro where people go wrong is they make that initial offer, like you said, with then no follow-up. In, in mind because well they just said no, no and no means not now and that's what you need to you know build on through the follow-up so you're exactly right on that no means not yet so uh, like we've talked about before we looked at uh, in a 12-month period the the number of deals that gavin and our team did like 58 deals and of those 58 deals 54 of them came from follow-up so that means if he would not have made done any follow-up we would have only done four deals that year. That's the truth. That's that's the way it works. On average, you have to have you know five to seven touches over three to four months of aggressive follow up. Okay, super important. No lead left behind. You can't let any leads fall through the cracks. Come on, Patrick. Look at this. Patrick's already oh, joined. Was it free, Patrick? Did we ask for your credit card information? Oh, now somebody else is saying, Brad, the link doesn't work. Well, Patrick, it works for him. Maybe something's wrong with it. But if you go to theofferchallenge.com, if you guys, the rest of you can maybe go there and um, check it out. And if you can, maybe copy and paste the link in the comments, whether you're watching this on Facebook or YouTube. Um, so, but having an offer gives you um, something that you can follow up with the sellers on. And this is one of the best reasons why you should send an offer um, is your competition's not doing it. Your competition is not doing it. I can't tell you how many um, people that I've talked to that are doing deals and they'll say things like, um, yeah, I, uh, 
Um, um, I forgot what I was going to say. I'm looking at these comments and it's distracting. <laughs> um, so yeah, there it's the offerchallenge.com. If the link's not working, Patrick is saying, yeah, zero dinero. We didn't ask for anything. It was zero money. <laughs> All right. So uh, making an offer is something your competition is not doing. I remember what I was going to say. I don't know. I can't tell you how many times I've talked to students and heard of people that are doing a lot of deals. They're saying, um, I'm taking, I'm doing these deals because number one, I'm taking my dead leads and I, the cold leads, the ones that say, no, I'm not interested. And I'm sending them multiple options. I'm sending them offers with multiple different options, a cash offer, lease option, owner financing or sub two or something like that. Um, so you should always be sending, even if guys, it's just a, a, a one page letter, something in the mail. And this is something we're also going to be talking about in the challenge is what to send to them, right? Like, um, you can make an offer over the phone and that's cool, but I strongly recommend sending something in the physical mail. Okay. Oh, I used the wrong link in the Facebook post. Sorry. So you guys, I'll fix it when we're done with the video here, but I put the wrong link in the description of the video. That's the problem, but it's the offer challenge.com. Okay, cool. I'll fix that. Uh, so, but, um, um, you got to make offers and you've got to follow up because that's where the deals are going to come from. Cool. Um, yeah. Gavin, talk a little bit about there's different kinds of offers that we like to make. And one of them is obviously the cash offer. Talk about when we make the cash offer. Yeah. So normally uh, if the person wants to sell quickly um, and, and I will say this guys, you can only do deals with motivated sellers. Right? Yes. So every, mm -hmm. Every offer that you make, depending on if it's creative or cash, or whatever, you can only do it with a motivated seller that actually wants to accept the offer. So always be thinking about that. But a cash offer, normally uh, you need equ they need equity in the deal. Now, there is instances where they will bring money to the table to close it. Not very often. So normally if they have equity and they want to sell quickly, you know, a tired landlord, they're over it. They want to sell it. It's been vacant. It needs too much work. Anything of urgency of literally cash quickly and I just want to be done. That's when the cash offer is really going to work. Um, and then you and, and here's the beauty with the cash offer. I always liked with the negotiation, regardless of what it is, is to kind of use the cash offer as my boundary. All right. As my like low barrier. And then all, everything is up from there. Any creative deal above the cash is more money for the seller. And then it's an easier transition as you go through. OK, so obviously you're looking at as you go into the creative side is someone wants more money. They want a higher price. They don't want to give it away. All right. They're happy to maybe rent it for a year or two. When you hear something like that, you're going to be thinking, oh, the lease option. OK, maybe they are they want too much money and it's free and clear and they're done with the property. Maybe you could offer an owner finance uh, where it's principal only payments. OK or uh, interest only. There's different ways of doing that. So we're going to be covering that. Maybe they're upside down in the property, but it's still cash flows. Maybe you could, you know, do a sub two or bring the current if they're behind on payments. Maybe you could bring it current if, it, if it's on a 30 year mortgage. OK, and you could come over and make it cash flow. You can build your equity over time and maybe do a subject two. So there's different ways that we're going to be talking in this challenge and lead ins to give you an understanding of not only how to make them offers, but when to make them offers, because that is the key is if you can learn the positioning of offers, all right, then it's going to change the game for you. Yep. So you make a cash offer when they just want to get rid of it. They don't want anything more to do with it. And um, they just want to be done and they have equity. They can take a cash offer. That's when you make a cash offer and you already know, because you've asked them through the conversation, they're not willing to wait. They're not willing to wait at all. Now, sometimes what you can do is you can still give them another option, give them a cash offer. It depends on like the situation. If it's more of a cold lead, I might give them a, a couple options. If it's a warm lead or a hot lead, just one at a time, one offer at a time. After they say no to that, then you could maybe in the follow-up say, you know, I might be able to get you more if you're willing to wait for it just to see what they say. Right. So a cash offer is good. When I, especially if it's a property that is run down, it needs a lot of work. It's a cheaper, lower end property. Those are good cash deals. Okay. Cause your, your goal is to either fix them up and, 
uh, resell them yourself or rent them out or sell them to a landlord or something like that. Another, another investor. Now a lease option, when is a lease option going to be a good fit? Well, a lease option is going to be a good fit on a nicer, more uh, a median price home that doesn't need as much work. So if a property is in already good shape because you found it on Zillow, it's listed for rent. They're willing to sell it. doesn't need any work. It's livable. That's a great lease option candidate. That's somebody that is probably not going to sell it at a significant discount. You can offer them more. And one of the questions is I like to ask them is, you know, do you want to sell this house? And they say, yeah, maybe. Or let's say they already have it listed for sale and they haven't sold it yet. It's been three, four months and it's a hot seller's market. And they're thinking, well, I, why haven't I sold this thing yet? And they're worried about making the next month's mortgage payment. And there are sellers like that right now in this market. All right. There are, there are motivated sellers, even in a hot market. You can ask them, listen, what are you going to do, Mr. Seller, if you can't sell this house? Are you going to rent it out? And if the seller says, yeah, I might have to rent it out. That's a great lease option candidate. Okay. Yep. When do you make an owner financing offer? I like to make owner financing offers in a couple of different scenarios, but usually on a house, it's free and clear. There's no mortgage on it. They're not in a hurry to sell and they want full price for it. I might be able to say, listen, I don't know if this would work for you, but what if I could get you that price that you want? Would you be willing to take that price in payments over time and see what they yep. say? Because there's a lot of, especially, you know, elderly people sometimes like they don't, you, you would ask them, what are you going to do with this cash when you get it? Um, are, you, are you prepared to pay all the taxes on it? Because they have to pay taxes on the, on the, on the, on the uh, capital gains of that house. Right. So like, that's a lot of money they might have to pay in taxes. They're not ready for what if you could help them out and I'm not a tax advisor or accountant, but like, if they can get back their payments over time, there's a lot of tax benefits to that potentially for yep. the seller. So you yep. can make them an owner financing offer. If it's free and clear, it doesn't um, need much, you know, even if it does need work, you can get really, really good terms giving the seller their price on your terms. So we're going to talk a lot about this in the challenge too: price versus terms. When do you offer the seller their price and your terms? When do you offer the seller their terms and your price. Their terms might be, I got to close in a week. Um, I don't want any contingencies. Those are terms that the seller wants. Well, you can give the seller the terms they want if they give you the price that you want. And we're going to teach you this in the challenge, understanding the difference of where to negotiate the price versus terms. Sometimes the seller will want their price and their terms, and that's not going to work. That's what realtors are for. That's when you refer them to an agent. All right. But there's still, again, sellers that don't want to sell with an agent. I was, uh, Gavin, I was on a podcast the other day with a realtor who um, couldn't believe, like, she was like, well, why would an investor ever want, I mean, why would, a, how can you actually even buy houses at significant discounts, you know? Because she's coming from the agent's perspective. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> and I just immediately, I told her my first deal, right? There was a seller that was super motivated, didn't want to list it didn't want to list it with an agent, didn't want to put the work in it, into it to fix it up. She wanted out. So in exchange for my price, I gave her the speed and convenience of selling her house quickly. Yep. Um, and so when I gave her a few more examples, then she's like, oh, I get it. So there may be sellers that, you know, you tell them you should list it with an agent if you want the most price for it, if you want the most, if you want to sell it for the highest. But to do that, you're going to have to fix it up. You're going to have to pay the agent commissions. You're going to, it may take a little bit of time. There's a lot of things you have to do. Yep. So it's, it's important to understand what the seller needs when you yep. make your offers, right? hundred percent. And it comes back to as well. And we said it already is you can only do deals with motivated sellers. And that's the thing. When you have a mate, an agent mindset, when they're listing and everything's going over asking and there's no deals and how possibly in this market would anyone get a discounted property is because you're just looking at it at a one lens, right? As an investor, and especially when you get into creative deals, you need to be thinking about different lenses and you're going to be looking through each one of these lenses trying to solve this puzzle or problem and that the lens that's going to that's, that's going to do the best job is the one that you're going to go with, um, because if you get in that mindset as no one's going to sell, you know, to me on a discount, you're never going to do a deal, you know, with that mentality. So, again, we're going to be talking a little bit about that as well, like having the right mindset uh, and, uh, when you're doing this. And, and it's really a numbers game. And, and our goal 
Joe, when we when this is a one offer, right? They've just got to make one offer in this challenge. Like that's it, one offer. And guess what? Once you've made one, you can make a yeah. hundred of them. And that's what we're trying to install in everyone is 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 to make more offers. And it all starts with just making one. Yeah, I don't know why we didn't buy the domain one offer challenge, but that's okay. We have the offerchallenge.com. I do want to say this too because you're absolutely right. Um, uh, you can only do deals with motivated sellers. But what if you have a non-motivated seller, an unmotivated seller, which is going to be most of the time? We're to, here to tell you, it's okay. Send them an offer anyway. Always, always, always send them offers. And here's the thing, guys. It's like it's like a law of, of nature or science. It's like a scientific proven fact. I would even go on to say, and I can't prove it, but if you, if, if you want to do deals, you need to make offers. So if you just say you made three offers a day, now you're thinking, what? Three offers a day. Yeah, it's not that hard. And you're not, it's not like you're talking to the sellers for 30 minutes to an hour each time, right? And you're not sitting down and overanalyzing the deal and spending hours coming up with an offer. It's like you talk to a seller for three to five minutes. You spend another three to five minutes to come up with an offer, 15 max, and you send them an offer. You did three of those a day, all right? That's how, how many in a week? 15 offers in a week. And what? 60 offers in a month. Yep. So you make 60 offers in one month. Do you think you might do a deal? Maybe, let's say you don't. Guess what? Next month, you make another 60 offers. Now you've got the next month, you've got 60 more to follow up with. Then the next month, you have 120 offers to follow up with. The next month, you've got 180 offers to follow up with. And we're not talking about making 180 phone calls. It could be a text message, an email, another postcard or a letter in the mail. Now, after six months, guys, you've got, I don't know, three, 400 offers and sellers that you can follow up with. That's where the deals happen. It's all about momentum. And so yeah. this offer challenge is going to be really, really important for you guys. Even if you, you've made offers before and you're struggling with getting that momentum back, or maybe you've never made an offer before and you want to learn how to make simple, fast offers. Well, next week, December 15th and um, eight, 15th and 16th at 8 p.m. Eastern, we're going to have um, a free offer challenge. And the goal is to just help you make one offer. Make one offer. Oh, Dan Toback is here too. What's up? Um, Teresa is asking, will there be a replay? I got a call. Yeah. So if you join the challenge, it's going to be done in a Facebook group. So the videos will be up for just a couple of days that day. And after um, we're, we're done as well. Two of my favorites on one screen. Come on, Dan. <laughs> okay. So where do you go? If you want more information on this challenge, go to theofferchallenge.com, theofferchallenge.com. We're doing this in the evening, 8 p.m. Eastern on, I think it's Wednesday and Thursday. Is that right, Gavin? Yeah, it is. And there's a reason we pick the evening because we don't. We normally do every morning uh, when we do these challenges, and we didn't want any excuses for no yes. one to join. So we even went late in the, in the uh, on the eastern coast because of the west coast can still join as well. Um, so make sure that you join us. You know what, guys, listen to if your goal is to make one offer a day, let's say, and you haven't talked to the seller, you can always go to the MLS or Redfin and Zillow and look up houses that are for sale. Look up properties that need work, that need updating. They've been on the market over 30, 60, 90 days and call that agent or just send them an offer. And it, it doesn't have to be a formal contract either. You want to make this. It can just be a, a cover letter. Hey, it was nice talking to you the other day. Or, hey, Mr. Realtor, it could be an email. I saw your listing here at 123 Main Street. Looks like a nice house. I'm surprised it hasn't sold yet. I'd like to make an offer on it. But before I waste your time, would your client consider something in this price range? Okay, that's an offer. And you can do that. You can send those kinds of emails at five in the morning before you go to work. So you have zero. Ex we're taking away all your excuses of why you can't make offers. All right. So go to theofferchallenge.com. We'll see you guys there. It's a good time to end here, Gavin. We're going to be doing some more podcasts leading up to this next week. Yep. And maybe tomorrow, too. I've got something on my calendar to do another one. Um, well, we're going to be teaching you more about the different kinds of offers to make, how to make them. Just teasing it a little bit because we want you to be on this live challenge. Um, cool. Anything else, Gavin, before we wrap it up? Oh, we'll see you there, guys. Theofferchallenge.com uh, next Wednesday, Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern. Let's go. I'm ready. You know what? I got an idea, Gavin. 
let's actually make some real offers on the on the challenge. You want to do that? Yeah, let's do it. Let's make some real live offers on the challenge. Oh, that sounds good. That's exciting. And, and what we could that. do is get someone else to give us a property yes. and we'll make it on theirs. Right? Boom. All right. So listen, if you're part of the offer challenge, if you bring us a lead that you're working on, we will help you come up with an offer live on the challenge. And I want to do more than one. I mean, we should do a couple, three of them, two or three of them on uh, Wednesday and a couple, another couple, three or four on Thursday. Ooh. Yep. So if you want to see us make offers and see how easy it is, let's let's get on it. Let's do it. December 15th, 16th, guys. Um, we appreciate you all. Ralph is in the house. Awesome. Nice. Um, awesome. Is anybody watching us from YouTube? Because I haven't seen any YouTube comments here. But, um, well, whatever. We'll see you guys there. Thanks, Gavin. All right. We'll Thank see you guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.